You're listening to 88.7 WLUW Chicago Sound Alliance, broadcasting from the campus of Loyola University. It's live from the heartland, featuring Katie Hogan and Tom Clark. Our guests today are Juanita Irizarry from Friends of the Park, Michael O'Toole from the Old Town School, and Aaron Claplin, Claire LaTourette, and Nate Hall from Bonnie and Clyde, a musical. And good morning, good morning, Chicago. And uh, do we not love spring break? Yay! Yay. It's, it's balmy outside. It's and, above zero. And we are down here with our uh, great show, Live from the Heartland, all suited up. We've got a full show, so that's why we cut off Kevin a little early. We have uh, Juanita Irizarry from Friends of the Parks, Michael O'Toole from the Old Town School, and uh, both uh, Claire and Nate, who are st- starring in... Um, Bonnie and Clyde, a uh, musical performance in Skokie, and their director, Aaron Kaplan. We're going to hear all of them. So let's just start. Uh, as we do thaw out from that polar vortex, Tom, uh, I am wanting to not forget uh, all the good that people did for one another this week. I'm thinking uh, specifically, I know our friend Kelly did a fundraiser online, and in one day for the night ministry, which... Uh, caters and helps uh, ha- homeless. She raised forty thousand dollars. It's this pretty amazing. Just a neighbor of ours. And then there was the anonymous donor on the south side who housed seventy uh, people or more in a motel. Which made national news this morning. It's it's a really right. touching story, and it's just brought out all sorts of other neighbors besides this one couple. Right. Um, you know, this fundraising thing is in this vi- in this internet age is. Still something I'm trying to get a handle on. I very innocently put up something for an immigration law group for kids and made my goal in two days, even before my birthday happens. Right. Uh, it's a pretty amazing little it is. vehicle, it's, and I'm going to see what Facebook's cut is now to see yeah. if it's worth doing it from now on. Yeah, I'd be interested in hearing that. But um, it, it it's a very nice, soothing kind of opportunity in this deep, frigid weather, and we just need to all take care of ourselves better. And I think... Uh, this city got through in pretty good shape, given just how deadly the weather was. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah, I was, you know, we're all holding our breaths, waiting for pipes from our old buildings not to freeze. And knock on wood, uh, they, uh, most of us got through it okay. There were a few people who uh, did not. Um, Unfortunately, on the international stage, our, our leaders in their infinite uh, lack of wisdom uh, want to bring us back to nuclear winter by spending us... To hell. Speaking about a new cold, arms rates. The, the return to the Cold War, anyone? Yeah, just what we were all hoping for. Great well, move. When uh, John Bolton slipped into position, I figured we had our new Dick Cheney, and I think he's getting his war and his nukes yeah. all in you know, a month or so. I'm, I'm just amazed Pompeo can stand there and announce this with uh, without you know gagging. Or these other generals. Well... Yeah, because uh, they course, know every bomb that gets built doesn't go to our troops who are actually defending us. You know, and we we keep building nuclear bombs that we hopefully will never use, and now we're going to do another generation of them. To what end? To what good? None. Haven't we learned yet after fifty years? Um, just astonishing warmongering. Well, the other thing, of course, that was appalling this week was the parading uh, parading in front of the security. Uh, community, the heads of the security community, after hearing what they actually thought were real and present dangers to the U.S., uh, uh, Mr. Flopander in Chief comes <laughs> behind it and says, "Yeah, not really. Yeah, not yeah, really. Yeah, I think yeah. our biggest, our, I think our biggest you need emergency. To go back to school. You need to go back to school. Our biggest emergency is on the southern border. Yep, that's it." Um, Good news for us in Chicago uh, was the police consent decree approved by the federal court. Um, That's something you've heard us report on before and that we were locally engaged with and committed to. And uh, it really is a historic moment. Now we'll see what the uh, hires up, uh, how they uh, actually implement it and if they actually implement it. Well, as we said in other places this week, now our real work begins. All those hours of negotiating with attorneys and kind of bringing the powers that be down to the community level and understand what Mm -hmm. our real angst about policing and how it could be changed Mm -hmm. and it should be changed and Mm -hmm. it must be changed. We can't afford half-billion-dollar payouts Mm -hmm. for police abuse. So, um, you know, in the middle of that, we still have hate crimes going on um, with all the news around the empire uh, 
star this week who got attacked. And we're still trying to find out more about that. So it's, it's an interesting time for further police accountability and reform. And I have to think there are a lot of cops on the beat who may be quietly relieved that this chapter has been completed and maybe they can get about the business of better policing. Right. Uh, we'll just cut to a couple more city stories before we bring on uh, Juanita. But um, the Lincoln Yard $6 billion project uh, continues to be um, going to – I think it will turn out to be a litmus test if, uh, if voters can get their way and push these – uh, the council to not decide on it before election day, before Rahm leaves office. He's pushing to, to have it. He wants a, a crown jewel in his cap going away, I think, and he sees Lincoln Yards as it. Um, people should uh, definitely call your alderman and, and demand accountability and say, you know, where's our TIF money going to? Um, so, I mean, we, we're going to have to do another TIF piece. This, this is soon. an abuse of this development tool, TIFFs. Which is uh, all no that's gushing. happened with it, pretty it's much. It's parking meter 2.0. Yeah. And I think the more we can label it that way, maybe more aldermen will pay attention to their constituents who, A, barely understand what's going on, why, go, going on here. This is a billion-dollar giveaway for luxury housing on Goose Island, which we used to protect for manufacturing jobs, just to try to put it succinctly. And, you know, they can build their housing if that's what they want, but they cannot get a billion dollars of money going to schools firemen, policemen, uh, without there being a public discussion about it. And quite frankly, there's not been enough discussion about this giveaway because it's not just this. Rescoville is scheduled for a yet another up almost billion dollars. Right, and, and that's, that's the, the South land, Loop. The South Loop. So mm -hmm. this is very dangerous stuff with a so-called lame duck mayor who's mm -hmm. going to be trying to give away our money even as he leaves office. Speaking of mayors, today the Women's Mayoral Forum is uh, happening at the Chicago Temple. Uh, it will be on Can TV Live at 1 p.m. I believe uh, the event itself is pretty booked, but it, you could try and get in. Uh, it goes from 1 to 4. This is the forum we've been telling you about. It's a, a, a coalition of folks, but Chicago women acting th together. <laughs> or how, how do you say that? There Marilyn? you go. Um, is uh, the main organizer of it, and it will be a good one. And really, frankly, uh, when you've got... Things happening like Bobby Rush endorsing Daly and uh, Amara Enya getting money from Dorothy Brown and being endorsed by Dorothy Brown. I think it is completely up for grabs, and I think Chicago needs to understand we've got to get good people in the top three slots. We don't have time to mention them all, but there are lots of forms and other opportunities right. to plug in, become knowledgeable, and be ready to vote because early voting starts Pretty soon. The 11th. Uh, the Battle of Lincoln Park is a new book that's coming out and on February 5th from 6 to 7 at Seminary Co-op Bookstore. The author, Daniel Hertz, will be talking about this interesting chapter in urban renewal and gentrification. Uh, I think uh, the other thing we just want to mention going out is that there's a rally Tuesday, February 5th, called Stand for Venezuela, uh, 4.30 p.m. in the Federal Plaza. We really do need... Um, for citizens to keep teaching our leaders how to approach the world and uh, what's going on in Venezuela is not the way. So we now want to uh, break to bring in our guest, Juanita Irizarry. We will have a small musical break, and you're listening to Live from the Heartland, 88.7 FM. Come back to us. We won't be long. <laughs> 